The UK energy market has been in crisis for the last two years. In this video, we're going to quickly run through the multiple events that have caused this crisis. Hi everyone, I'm Richard Winstone with Over 50's Money, and this is the second video in the Simplifying Energy series. In this video, we're going to run through the events that caused the UK energy crisis um, over the last two years, and really quickly just explain how they led to it. I'd recommend getting to the last 30 seconds because it's a part there that most people don't often think about. Before we get started, please do like, subscribe and turn on notifications for these videos. It helps us to help you. The more people we're able to reach, the further this information goes and the better people understand the UK energy market, as well as the other things we talk about in our videos, the different ways that over 50s community can save money. So yeah, please do like and subscribe to the over 50s money YouTube channel. Thank you. All right, let's get started. So. Let's start in October 2020. That is where the crisis really began. We had a cold winter in Europe. So up until October 2020, everything's fine in the energy market. Cold winter in Europe ate into the gas stores across Europe. This is fairly common, but it was a particularly cold winter, which means we ate further into the normal. So the hope would be in 2021, there's an opportunity to restock the gas storage in Europe. However, in 2021, the UK had a 40 year low wind generation. So uh, wind operates on a cycle and 2021 was the lowest year for wind in the UK across 40 years and we depend quite heavily um, on wind generation at least more than other countries across Europe so where we weren't able to generate electricity through um, wind we were using other sources which includes the gas stores in Europe so they weren't given the opportunity to grow on top of that Asia had a particularly hot summer, so with all their aircon units on to keep the country cool, that uses more electricity, which obviously ate into the gas stores even further. So the world supply of gas is getting limited, and across that summer of 2021, across the year of 2021, where we were hoping to increase gas storage, we're actually still digging into it. So it's reducing the supply available for our next winter. Now this here is just a piece of information. It's not um, vital right now, but it's important to remember that Ofgem set the October price cap in August of 2021 um, at £1,138. And once Ofgem makes that announcement, that's it. And that price cap lasted until March 2022. So in August, they announce it. It comes into effect in October and it lasted for six months. But also in August, the energy crisis became apparent. Wholesale prices started rising and energy suppliers started panicking because they realised wholesale prices were going to go higher than this price cap that Ofgem have set. Before we get to that price cap coming into play, there was an interconnector fire between France and the UK. This interconnector brought in um, electricity from Europe into the UK and the fire limited capacity to 50%. Now that's good for Europe and bad for us. We had 50% less electricity coming in from Europe, which means we had to generate it ourselves. Um, and Europe, who would have been uh, providing that energy to the UK, now has that 50% capacity, which they're not sending externally, so they can use it internally. That was a benefit to them, and it was a, uh, obviously a downside to us. That took a long time to repair, and we had just reduced imports from Europe because of it. Across that winter of 2021, Russia had started reducing its exports of gas. Um, so Europe relies on Russian exports. I think something like 40% of gas usage in Europe is from Russian exports. Don't quote me on that. I apologize if that's not quite accurate, um, at least at that time anyway. Um, and Russia in the lead up to invading Ukraine started reducing their gas exports. And we saw 30 energy suppliers in the UK collapse. That is because of what I said about August, the price cap was set lower than uh, the cost of energy, which means every customer became a liability to an energy supplier. They were charging us less than what they were paying for the energy. Plus they had other costs on top, all the salaries and the infrastructure they have. Um, so some energy suppliers were able to weather that storm and had savings uh, backed up and 30, over 30 energy suppliers weren't. Now, this causes further issues for us because every time an energy supply collapses, there are costs involved. And those costs are initially incurred by new energy suppliers, the ones that take on all the customers, but they are passed on to us in our energy bills later on. And then the final point, which you're all aware of, is that Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, and all of the sanctions put in across Europe meant gas exports from Russia fell off the grid. There was none. So 
the reason all of these things pushed up our gas and electricity prices, because the question I've been getting a lot is that we still had gas and electric and it hasn't cost any more to produce. So why does limiting the uh, the supply or the, the reserves mean that our prices have gone up so dramatically? And that is a basic supply and demand. Supply has fallen and demand wasn't falling and energy producers needed demand to fall. Otherwise, countries across Europe would have gone black. Like it just would have gone absolutely dark. We'd have had no power anywhere. So we needed people to use less so it could be spread out. So what the energy producers did was massively ramp up their costs, their prices. Their costs didn't go, didn't change at all, but their prices went up, which is why we're now seeing companies like British Gas, um, Shell, BP, um, announce record level profits, triple the record before, things like that, because they got huge amounts of money for what they were providing, but their costs didn't go up. But they had to do that so that us, the consumers, stopped using energy as much as possible so they could be, could be spread out through the winter when supplies were low. Otherwise, as I say, the electricity would have gone off, heating would have gone off, it could have been a lot worse. So we've, we've paid for that, and this is why windfall taxes have been put in place to try and claw back some of that money that they don't actually need, but it was an economic policy that they used to limit su demand so that the supply spread as far as it could. And that's what caused the, the, the crisis in the UK. I'm going to do another video on Ofgem's reactions across this two-year period. I think you guys will find it quite interesting. Um, in my opinion, they worsened the crisis with a lot of what they've done. Um, and I just think that needs its whole other video to, to explain. But I'll do that in another video. And when it's ready, I will link to it from the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to the Over 50s Money channel. Uh, don't forget to press the little bell to turn on the notifications. And I'll be back in a couple of days with the next simplified energy video. Thank you.